prince of my enemies And I'll raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief And I'll raise a hallelujah Cause my weapon is a melody Hallelujah Oh heaven comes to fight for me Yeah. 
welcome to Church of Hope Online. My name is Emily and I am so excited that you are gathering with us today. Now, I've got to know, how are you joining Hope Online? Are you like me and you're on a computer? Or maybe you're on your phone, a tablet, or you're streaming to your TV. Let me know. Go ahead and leave a comment that you're with a computer, a tablet, a phone, or you're streaming to your TV. Hey, I'm loving seeing how you are joining Hope Online. Now, speaking of connecting, maybe it's your first time at Hope Online or your first time in a long time. We are glad you're here and we want to connect with you. So in the comments, you will see a link for our virtual connect card. It's basically a digital way to say hello. So go ahead and click that link fill it out and our team will connect with you. We just wanna partner with you in prayer and equip you with some resources on this journey. Now, another way we connect is through giving. You know, I've been fortunate as a 20 something that I grew up in a home where I watched my parents give consistently and faithfully to the local church, leaning in and trusting God with their finances. Because of that consistent trust, their faithfulness, I was able to see how God blessed them. So in my 20s, I thought of no better way than to lean in and trust God by giving consistently myself. Now, I choose to give to Church of Hope online. It's super easy, but there are several different ways that you can give consistently at Church of Hope as well. Check this out on my computer screen. So you can give online at hopeinocala.com. It's safe and secure. You can also text to give, which is super easy and you can mail in a check or cash to Church of Hope's office. Now, giving is so important because we're partnering with both local and global mission partners, so people not just here in Ocala, but around the world can discover hope in Christ. I'll be sharing a little bit more about this later in our service and with an update of how Pastor Mark is actually talking with one of our mission partners this next week, so do not miss that. Stick around to hear that important update. Hey, we're gonna lean back into worship, but coming up are some special things because today is, oh, you know, my Mother's Day, so we have a special way to celebrate all of our moms out there. Pastor Mark has an incredible message that you do not want to miss one second of, and we have a couple other things happening. So grab your coffee or your tea, or maybe your Diet Coke. I heard a couple of you are fans of Diet Coke. Grab whatever your favorite morning go-to drink is and join us as we continue to lean into worship together.
welcome home. <laughs> sort of, right? Imagine after a long day at work, of course, after we're done sheltering in place, that you come home and pull in your driveway, and instead of going into your beautiful home, you decide to go into your camper for dinner. Or it's a Friday night, and you've invited some friends over for dinner, and they arrive at your house thinking that they're going to go into your permanent home, <laughs> and you greet them from your camper. Now, it's not lost on me that inside this camper, this temporal home, that there's a bathroom, as small as it might be. Um, there's a small kitchen. It's functional, but it's temporary. It's not as beautiful and pristine as your permanent home. Now, help me with this. Let's take a little poll. How many of y'all would think that it's strange to be invited to your friend's house to pull in their driveway and in having dinner in their temporary camper rather than their permanent home? Just drop me a comment right here um, in, in the comment section. Yes, I think that's strange or no, not at all. What do you think, right? Talk to me, drop, drop a comment. I, I, I think I can guess for most of us, we're dropping a whole bunch of yeses. Yes, that would be strange to be invited to someone's home and to have the temporary camper as our greeting place. Now, there's nothing wrong with temporary places, the camper. Uh, you can take it on a, on a trip with your family and visit and, and, and have a great vacation. But it's not our permanent home. Imagine with me that your permanent home, it begins to fall into disrepair. It, it needs some upgrades. But you say to yourself, you know, I'm, I'm going to, rather than repairing my permanent home, I'll spend the money on my temporary home. That's not how we think. Now let's embrace this idea spiritually. You see, in Philippians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul says that our citizenship is in heaven. He says, in other words, we're just visitors here on earth, that our focus and our attention should be on heaven. But how many of us spend most of our lives focusing on the temporal existence on earth? the 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years of life, the tiny little amount of time compared to the length and the breadth and the width of eternity. If there's one thing, if there's one thing that might become productive out of this sheltering in place, this pandemic disease that has circled our globe, if we as Christ followers grow through this season, and on the other side, we have a fresh perspective of eternity. A lot of time and attention has been given to the idea of, let's make our country great again. Today, I'd like to make eternity great again. I'd like to make eternity our focus and our priority again. Now that you ask the question, how do we do that? Mark, with all of the time commitments, I've got a job, I've got my kids, um, I've got my career, uh, I'm married, I'm single, I'm looking for somebody. I mean, all the things, all the, the pressures of life. How do you and I, in our ordinary, everyday lives, really make heaven, which we kind of know about in our minds, but the truth is, we live here on earth. It's a whole lot easier, right, to make earth our priority. But it's as silly as making an RV your permanent home with your ultimate home in view. The Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3, if you want to join me there, he really unpacks this idea for us. He, he wants us to understand that it's not just possible it really can become probable that you and I can focus on eternity even when we're living here on earth. Here, check this out. Here's what he says in verse 13. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what's ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. 
he gives us some very practical steps. Beginning with this, and, and let me tell you, this is probably the one that I'm the most thankful for. Did you notice what he said? He said, I don't consider myself yet have taken hold of this. I have not already attained all this. You know what he's saying? Is that the Christian life isn't marked by perfection. I mean, the Apostle Paul saying he hasn't arrived yet. The guy who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. I mean, the Apostle Paul says he hasn't arrived. He's not perfect. You know, God's never asked you or I ever to be perfect. He's just asked us to progress, to wake up every single day and to trust Him, to lean into this journey. That's what Paul's talking about. He's saying, listen, it's not about being perfect. It's about progressing. And Paul says that he pressed on. He made a, a deliberate decision that, that he was going to not just kind of think about heaven, he was going to press on. In other words, he was going to make a deliberate decision in his everyday, ordinary life. Yes, we live on earth. This is where God has us stationed. But God wants us to know over and over and over that heaven is our citizenship. Our temporary assignment is on earth. Heaven is our home. <laughs> We're visitors on earth. And so we pursue it. We pursue it by our everyday, ordinary decisions. We flip the script. We make decisions about our relationships and our friends and our finances with our heavenly home in view. We, we make a sense of, of priority. In other words, we prioritize our relationship with God in heaven as we pursue our everyday, ordinary lives. There's nothing wrong with having an RV, right? This family can take this RV on a vacation. This RV, if, if by chance the, the, the power would go out, this RV could be used as a backup, as a secondary. But do you catch it? It's a backup. It's a secondary. It's not their primary residence. Their focus is on their home. When they show people pictures of where they live, they don't show a picture of their RV. They show a picture of their home. When they have their Christmas celebration, they're not setting up a Christmas tree in their RV. They're setting up a Christmas tree in their home. When there's birthday parties for the children, when they celebrate the important moments of their life, the focus is not on the temporary RV. The focus is in their permanent home. That's what the Apostle Paul's teaching us. He's teaching us that our focus is not on the temporary moments, the years and the decades that we live on earth. It's on the permanency of our citizenship in a real place called heaven. That's why he says, I press on towards the prize, the goal. He presses on. He's not gliding on. Now, come on. Let's get, let's get just a little bit honest today. How many of us, right, you're, you're a Christ follower. You've made a decision for Jesus. You believe that he was born of a virgin named Mary. You believe theologically that he never sinned. You believe that he died on a cross for your sins, that he was buried, he was in the earth for three days. You believe that he resurrected, that he became alive again. But let me ask you a really pointed question. Are you pressing on with your life or are you gliding through? You say, Mark, what's the difference between press on and gliding through? There's a huge difference. Remember, he says, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. See, salvation is free. Salvation is God's gift to you. It's the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. It's the reality of His resurrection, His bodily resurrection. Salvation is free to you and to me. But hear me, spiritual development is not. The Apostle Paul, he's pressing on. He's making a deliberate decision. He's prioritizing his view and his focus. He's not just going through the motions. He's waking up every day and saying, I'm determined in this day to pursue this prize, this heavenward. And that happens when you and I live our lives with the view of our permanent home, our citizenship 
is in heaven. We're just visitors here on earth. We press on. So how do we do this? Verse 13, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal. In other words, he's got to make a deliberate decision. I'm going to forget what lies behind. The greatest danger out of this pandemic, it's not the COVID-19. The greatest danger of this pandemic, this disease that's gone globally, is that we as Christ followers just want to go back to how life was. We miss the moment to see that God's doing a new work. He's up to something different in our global world today. And our focus is on heaven. Our focus isn't on just making our country good again. Our focus isn't just on making the economy good again. Our focus is heavenward. Our focus is not inviting people just to experience our lives in the temporal RVs uh, moments of our life. It's to invite people to discover that there's hope in Christ permanently in a real place called heaven. That's why we partner. We partner up. Notice what the Apostle Paul, he says, I forget the things that are behind. You know, all of us have a behind. <laughs> some literally and some figuratively. We all have a behind, right? There's some things that we'd like to forget in our lives. But too often our minds, too often people around us bring up those things. And, and we get caught, we get trapped from pressing forward and being who God created us to be because we're not listening to what God's telling us that we forget those things which are behind and we press on towards seeing that our citizenship, it's in heaven, that we're only on loan here on earth. So how do we do it? How do we have this kind of press on? How do we really pursue this? We've got to have the right kind of partnerships. It's one reason I'm so thankful for my small group. Even during this pandemic, we were able to gather together on Zoom. See, we really are better together. When we've got people in our lives who are challenging us, right? Again, imagine how many of us have made temporary decisions on the RV moments of our life. We've made a, we've made a momentary earthly decision we forgot about our home being in heaven. We forgot about pressing on towards the prize that we have in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, imagine how perhaps potentially if we had somebody in our lives that we were partnering up with that would get our focus off what's earthly and on what's heavenly. Perhaps some of the pain, perhaps that relationship that you're involved in right now, you wouldn't be involved in that relationship if we really had somebody that we had invited, that we had partnered with up in our lives to challenge us on that. I mean, come on now, let's, let's make it real. You're trying to keep your marriage together, right? You, you want your marriage to go the distance. But, but, but you're asking counsel from your girlfriend who's divorcing her husband. Now, what kind of counsel can a girl who's divorcing her husband give you when you're trying to keep your marriage together? I'm just saying we've got to have the right partners. Notice what he says in verse 17. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters. And just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as well. Let me just say to moms and dads, in this season where so much of our world has gone online, moms and dads, I sure hope that you're taking the time to check out who your sons and your daughters, who your grandchildren are checking out online. And let me just be as bold to say this. If you're paying for that device, then you've got the ownership and the right to look at that device anytime that you want. There are a whole lot of young people, I can't help but to think, are creating habits and seeing things that right now they shouldn't be seeing that perhaps potentially, they're focused on what's temporal. They're focused, they're teenagers, they're focusing on what's happening right now and they're losing the sight of their permanency, their place in, in, in heaven. Moms and dads, this is not the season to try to be the cool friend to our, our kids. It's the season to be mom and dad. Here, let me show you. Look what it says in verse, verse, verse 18. For as I have often told you before, and now I tell you again, even with tears, are you hearing me, moms and dads? Even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. So let's be clear. We partner with everybody to discover hope in Christ. 
but I'm talking about who are you partnering with that's going to help you stay focused on your permanent home in heaven rather than getting caught up with all of the traps that are here on earth. I believe in small groups. What do you mean, Mark? I believe in having a small group of Christ followers who are also focused on heaven to help you and to help me. And if you're not in a small group, I want you to email me today. Home church at hopeinocala.com. Home church at hopeinocala.com. I'm not sure how and when we're going to be able to open back up, but I know this. You having a small group of people, whether we're gathering on a campus on Mary Camp Road or we're still online, having a small group of people who help you and I stay focused on what's heavenly and not what's earthly, that's going to be a game changer in our lives. Now let me just conclude with kind of this big idea, this thought. And I want you to hear my heart. I've been very careful through this pandemic not to over-spiritualize this, but I want you to hear how the Apostle Paul kind of helps us focus in on this perspective of heaven is our home. Notice what he says in verse 20. But our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Did you hear it? Eagerly await a Savior, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. See, for 2,000 years, the church believers have been anticipating the imminent return of Jesus Christ. We celebrate at Christmas the first time Jesus came as a baby. You believe in Christmas. You celebrate Christmas. The Bible teaches us clearly that Jesus Christ is coming again. Whether or not these are the actual end times, I don't know. The Apostle Paul, he used the word that he was eagerly awaiting. The good news is, Jesus Christ is coming again. (laughs) The bad news is, we don't know when. So the question is, are you prepared? Are you living with this perspective? There's no greater way for you and I to anticipate, to eagerly anticipate His return than to start with this step today, to change our focus on what's temporal, what's just happening on earth. Of course, I'm not being morbid. I'm not asking you to stop living. We have our families. We have our careers. We like to go on vacations. God's not asked us to stop. What God's asked us is to focus, to be reminded that our home is in heaven. We simply work here on earth. Either way, either God calls you before he comes back to heaven or he comes back from heaven and calls us home. Either way, there's a meeting that's going to take place. My question is, are you prepared? Are you prepared for your ultimate heavenly citizenship that's in heaven? Don't you think today is the right day? I'm glad there's some who are trying to make our country great again. But Christ follower, don't you believe today is the best day for you and I to make eternity a priority again? To live today with the view of the imminent return of Jesus. You you know, we were redeemed here on earth. But we weren't redeemed for here. We were redeemed for there. Yeah, we were redeemed while we're here, but we're ultimately redeemed because our citizenship, our home in heaven. So we leverage everything that we have, our relationships, our cash, uh, our hobbies, the breath we breathe, everything is to help people move their eyes off what's temporal, time, earth, to see what's eternal, their home in heaven. So the question is, are you ready? question is, are you prepared? Are you ready to live the rest of your life with the view of your heavenly home in heaven? It wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't make any sense, and people would call you foolish if you spend all your time, all your energy, and all your cash on this temporary RV. It makes all the sense 
to spend our time and our energy on what's most valuable in our lives is our permanent home. Would you make that decision today? Have you made that decision to make Jesus Christ a priority in your life? I can tell you for me, in Okinawa, Japan in 1986, I began my relationship with Jesus. And I want you to hear me clear. The Apostle Paul said that he had not yet attained his goal, but he pressed on. God's not asking you to be perfect. He's not asking you to clean up your life today. He's just asking you today to pursue him. Would you? You can pursue him in a prayer right here, right now. Would you just pray this? Dear God, it's me. And today, I'm asking you, Jesus, to forgive me. I don't want to just focus on what's temporal, what's earthly. I want to focus on heaven. I want to make sure that I have a home in heaven. Jesus, I believe that you died on a cross and became alive again. And I'm inviting you. I'm, I want you to become the leader of my life. And to those of you who just prayed, welcome to God's family. Would you let me know right there on the page that you're watching online that today you committed your life to Jesus. Today that you started a relationship with Jesus Christ. And let me be the first person to say to you, welcome to the family of God. Such a great decision. And to those of us who are Christians, would you make a decision right now today? And I wanna, I wanna actually encourage you to be accountable. Would you right here in the comments say, yes, I'm gonna start living the rest of my life with heaven in view. I'm gonna make a decision on how I spend my money my relationships, my time, my energy. I'm not gonna focus, Mark, on what's temporal. I'm gonna focus on what's eternal. Would you drop me a comment right here and say, yes, Mark, I'm making a decision. Yes, yes. I'm gonna get prepared for the imminent return of Jesus Christ. And the best way to get prepared for that is to have your eyes focused on your ultimate home, a real place called heaven. Would you pray with me? God, I thank you for this Bible study today. Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 20, and how you've opened up our eyes to the reality of heaven. It's been easy for many of us to focus on what's temporal. But hear our prayer today. We surrender our lives. We trust you that home in heaven is far greater than the temporal place of earth. God, we want to walk in the freedom God, free us from the entanglements of earth and time and allow us to focus that with Jesus in us and with us and for us, that we can focus on the freedom that we have in heaven. And will you put us on mission the rest of our lives, avoiding the temptation to point people to what's temporal, to celebrate what's earthly, but to point all of our friends to the eternal destiny of a great place called heaven. I love you. We pray everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Peace. Wow, what an incredible word from Pastor Mark. Let's make eternity important again. But how do we do that? I mean, I just turned 29. I'm just trying to figure out my 20s. Do you know what I mean? So as I've been thinking, how can I, Emily, make eternity important again? How can I move my mind from here on earth to heaven? I thought of a few simplistic ways and it's often the simple that can get overlooked. So the first way to make eternity important again is to put your mind there, to begin in his word and in talking with God. You know, this is the exact spot where every single day I dive into God's word and I let God's word read me. Um, then I also pray here. Pastor Mark taught us the postures of prayer, hands up in surrender, hands open in freedom, and hands forward in purpose. It's here where we put our mind in eternity. We make eternity important again. Another way is by doing life together. You know, Church of Hope never closed. We never stopped. And Pastor Mark has been teaching us that it's time for us to learn and to live out being the church. He's also said that if he was moving to Ocala to launch Church of Hope for the very first time right now, he would start with smaller groups, with home churches, those groups of five to 15 people who would meet all week long and then we would have one time we would meet together. 
Pastor Mark has asked us for our opinions on how we re-enter the physical building, that physical location at Church of Hope. And I have a hard question for us to wrestle with this morning. Are we ready to re-enter the building in a large crowd if we're not ready to enter into community with a small crowd in a small group? This week, Pastor Mark is going to be sharing a video of how to start a small group. And it's as easy as inviting a couple of your friends together. My small group is one of my favorite times of the week. Whether we're in person or we're on Zoom, it's a great time of community, doing life together, and putting my mind back on heaven, making eternity important again. You know, if you're interested in joining a small group, you can also email homechurchathopeinocala.com. And the third way, and perhaps one of the most important ways that we make eternity important again, is through giving consistently. I shared earlier that I had the privilege of growing up in a home where I watched my parents give consistently, trusting God with their finances. And as a, an adult, it was natural for me to then lean in and do the same. I've sh seen him shown up in my world in ways I never could have anticipated. And I believe it's because I leaned in consistently. I gave faithfully. You know, one of the sure markers of what we make important is how we invest our finances. So what better way to make eternity important again than by financially investing in it? This week, Pastor Mark is meeting with Aaron Brakefield, our missionary with Wycliffe Associates. You know, a while back, we partnered up with Aaron and we translated the Bible for people in Zimbabwe who never had the Bible before. Pastor Mark and Aaron are talking this week. Did I mention? They're talking this week about a new Bible translation project. I can't think of a better way to invest my resources than in people receiving physical word of God who have never received the Bible in their mother tongue before. Talk about making eternity important again. So you can give in a secure way online at hopeinocala.com and you can even mail in your checks or cash to Church of Hope's office. Thank you for giving generously and thank you for making eternity important again. Now we are going to celebrate some special people. That's right, all you mamas out there. It is time to celebrate our moms in a super special way. But after this celebration, hang tight because I'm gonna come back as we head into the rest of our day together. Hey moms, you ready to celebrate? My mom is persistent. She jogs every day. I love you, mom. My mom is optimistic, always making the best out of certain situations, just like the coronavirus. I love you, Mom. My mom is beautiful. I love you, Mom. My mom is a survivor. She beat breast cancer 20 years ago and never looked back. I love you, Mom. You're my superhero. Mwah. My mom is supportive in so many different ways. I love you, Mom. Mom is crazy. I love you, Mom. My mom is a great person to talk through things with, and she's a great example to my wife and I uh, for raising our kids. I love you, Mom. My mom is who made me get over stage fright and sing. I can't wait to see you again, Mom, and sing with you in heaven. I love you, Mom. My mom is a great mom. She does the dishes every day and makes our meals. I love you, Mom. Say we. We. Love. Love. Mommy. Mama. My mom is the best HI director in the whole county. I love you, Mom. My mom is adventurous. And she's adventurous because Every time I'm in the woods, she's always by my side and she's always there to keep me safe. I love you, Mom. My mom is crazy. I love you, Mom. My mom is very kind. Love you, Mom. My mom is awesome. Love you, Mom. My mom is caring. Love you, Mom. My mom is awesome. My mom is a survivor. During her journey with breast cancer, she exemplified beautiful strength, joy, and she showed others that through Jesus, we can have hope. Mom, I love you. My mom is one of the strongest people I know. I love you, Mom. My mom is the best mom ever. Love you, Mom. My mom is my superhero. I love you, Mom. My mom is the sweetest mom ever. Love you, Mom. Our mom is the most selfless, caring person. 
We love you, Mom. My mom is amazing. I love you, Mom. I love my mom because she is the most selfless, helping, and loving Grammy and mom we could ask for. I love you, Mom. My mom is my biggest cheerleader. Love you, Mom. Our mom tries to make every day fun. Yeah, she does the best scavenger hunts. We love you, Mom. My mom is selfless, sweet, and caring. I love you, Mom. My mom is great, and I love you, Mom. My mom is one who truly loves the simple things in life. I am so thankful to be able to share many of these times with her. I love you, Mom. My mom is always the one to put others' needs before her own. I love you, Mom. My mom is nice. Love you, Mom. My mom is beautiful. I I love you, Mom. My mom is the best and very, very smart. And my mom is the best mom. We love you, Mom! I love my mommy because she cares for me so much. My mom is my best friend. I love you, Mom. My mom is awesome. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. My mom is so fun to shop with. She always knows how to find the best deals and shopping snacks. I love you, Mom. My mom is beautiful. I love you, Mom. I love my mommy because she makes the best biscuits and gravy. My mom is generous. She gives from her heart um, and goes above and beyond and the extra mile for anyone that she's ever around. I love you, Mom. My mom is a fabulous cook and super creative. I love you, Mom. My mom is awesome. I love you, Mom. My mom is an incredible and powerful woman of God. I love you, Mom. Our mom is loud. She's always there to stand up for our family. We, we love, love you, you mom. mom. One thing I love about my mom is that she's always there when I need her, and she's very compassionate for others. Love you, Mom. My mom is awesome. I, I, I love my mom. My mom is my hero. My mom is the most giving person I know. My mom is the best cook. We, we love, love you, Mom. mom. Hi, Teacher Pope. My mom is the best mom in the whole world. Love you, Mom. My mom is sacrificial. I love you so much, Mom. My mom is my number one fan. She tells everyone that I have a very important job, even though she has no idea what it is I do. Love you, Mom. My mom is such an inspiration. I love you, Mom. Mom, I love the woman that God is turning you into. I love you, Mom. My mom is compassionate and kind. My mom is loving and caring. We love you, Mom. Our mom, Our mom is, is smart, smart because, because she helps she us with us everything, everything we help with. We love we you, love Mom. Many awesome things about my mama is she is one of the most thoughtful people I know. I love you, Mama. Hello. Happy Mother's Day. I love my mom because of her generosity towards others. My mom is cool. <laughs> She's slow to anger most of the time unless I'm being dumb, which happens. <laughs> my mom's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. My mommy is my best mommy ever best. I love you, Mommy. I love you, Mommy. My mom is wonderful. I love you, Mommy. My mom is so loving and caring. Thank you, Mom, for all that you do for the family. We are so blessed to have you, and you are the best mom ever. My mom is the most beautiful mom ever. I love you, Mom. Hi, happy Mother's Day. I love my mom because of her kindness and the fact that she brightens every room that she walks into. Mom, so, um, what's the lesson? Well, happy Mother's Day to all of our mamas and mom. I know you're joining Church of Hope Online this morning. Happy Mother's Day to you. Well, it is about time to head to Hope Kids. Thank you for joining us at Hope Online this week. If there is any way that we can partner with you, please email us at care at hopeinocala.com. We want to pray with you and partner with you on this journey. Moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, uncles, aunts, cousins, if you have a kid attached to you and you're not receiving Hope Kids updates, please email katie at hopeinocala.com and she'll make sure that you get all the resources that you need. Well, I'm excited to head on over to Hope Kids. Thank you for joining us at Church of Hope Online. We'll see you next week. And for all the kids in the room, let's head to Hope Kids. Hey, and welcome to my living room and to Hope Kids Online. I'm so glad you're here today. 
I have been thinking about making a blanket fort for a long time, and I decided that today is gonna be that day. But before I show you how I make it, let me know that you're here and watching with me, and you have five seconds to hit the like button on this video. Are you ready? Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Wow, I'm so glad you guys are here with me today at Hope Kids Online. Are you ready for my blanket fort? Check it out. So, what do you think? Pretty epic. It only took me, uh, I don't know, like five or six blankets. If you think my blanket fort is pretty cool, hey, give me a like on this video to let me know. Do you wanna see inside? Come on, let's check it out. You know, it's actually pretty roomy in here. Adding this lamp in the middle really helps raise the ceiling so that there's more space to sit and move around. And I even have a little stand for my iPad so I can watch today's episode of The Loop Show in a little bit. You know, I've been thinking about making this blanket fort for a really long time. I'm so glad that I finally did it. And you know what else I've been thinking about? <laughs> That's right, I've been thinking about playing a game with all of you. Are you ready for a game? Okay, so we're gonna do a little scavenger hunt and you have to find different items around your house. Are you ready? Okay, first item is a spoon. Go race to that kitchen, grab a spoon from the drawer and come right back here. Five, four, three, two, one. Are you back? <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Two more items. Are you ready? Okay, a left shoe. Find any left shoe in your house and bring it back here. A left shoe, go. I'm counting down. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> wow, you guys are so fast. Okay, last item. Are you ready? Okay, grab somebody in your family to come watch today's episode of The Loop Show with you. Whether it be your brother or your sister, your mom, your dad, grandma or grandpa, whoever it is, grab them and invite them to watch today's episode of The Loop Show. Ready, set, go. Okay, are you back? Are you ready? Let's check out today's episode of The Loop Show. Brains, brains. Let's talk about brains. Hang on for the loop. Weird. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, let's try it again. Uh, three, two, one. Hang on for the loop. Working. Let's check out the Loop Show control room, see if we can get this thing started. Okay. Uh, Oh, thank you. Yeah, do you. Oh, no. Is this how we left it? Oh, uh, Ugh. Okay, okay, okay. All right, maybe press Control, Alt, right. Delete, or Start, turn it off, and then turn it back on again. All right, uh, we did it. Uh, okay, okay, no, bring, bring it back, bring it back. I'm just, okay. just trying every button. All right, hit the first yellow button, and then the third one, then the fifth one. One, three, uh -huh. uh, five. Okay, three, two, one, hang, hang on, on for, for the, the loop. loop. I'm Jamie. And welcome to the Loop Show Control Room. This is the brains of the Loop Show. If we want to play a video, all I have to do is just press this button. No, wait, not that one! Chrissy has beautiful hair that grows. And grows. Beautiful Chrissy hair that grows. Oh, that was, that was weird. They were just, they were just Janking her hair out of her head. I do not like dolls with growing hair. We've got to be super careful about what buttons we push in here. I see what you're saying. You're saying that we should practice more control in the control room? I see what you did there. This is the perfect place to talk about our theme for this month, mind control. Like uh, hypnotism. Oh, well, no, it's more like, do you ever feel like you just can't get control of your thoughts? All the time. Yeah, think about the things you think about. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, no, it's hard to control your thoughts. I don't know what's happening in my brain. Well, let's check this out. 
Welcome. I'm Professor Benjamin Monroe, but my friends call me Professor Lexicon. I'm an entomologist, which means I love to study words. Now, let's make this quick before... Do I have to have a sidekick? Could I just do it once without? Sorry, people of the sidekick. What's up, crispy fries? It's your boy, Ed, a.k.a. Scooch. When I say big, you say words. Big. Words. Big. Words. Hello, Ed. Oh, call me Scooch. I'm not doing that. Today we're going to be discussing some big brain words, so please keep your interjections short. You got it, Dr. Words. It's Professor Lexicon. And I'm Scooch. Now, we're going to be talking about some wonderfully rich words that describe important chemicals in our brains. These chemicals drive how we make decisions. Like adrenaline? Ah, uh, that's like that sweet rush that you get when you're flying down a hill and you realize your snowboard really needs snow to work. Uh, today we're going to be discussing words that describe neurotransmitters. Nitro what now? Uh, neurotransmitters is a brilliant word that describes the chemicals in our body that transmit messages across our nervous system in our body. <laughs> the words we'll be focused on are dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. First up, whatever you said first. <laughs> dopamine. Dopamine is a mixture of the words dopa and amine. Dopa is originally an acronym for the word dihydroxyphenylalanine. Whoa, you want a real rush? Say that three times fast. <laughs> dopamine is a chemical that's released when we do something rewarding or take a risk. Dopamine is released when we learn to ride a bike or win a spelling bee. It is a powerful motivator. I bet you won a lot of spelling bees back in the day. I did. Uh, moving on to serotonin. Oh, I went to school with a serotonin. Cool girl. Serotonin, not serotonin. Serotonin is a natural chemical linked to our feelings of happiness and contentment. When this chemical is released, all worry subsides and our mood improves. Groovy. The final word in our trio is a hormone known as oxytocin. This chemical is released when we feel safe or we're around someone that we trust. You're describing how I feel when I'm around you, bud. Thank you, pal. Dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin are words woven into our lives, helping us make decisions and expressing who we are. Pretty cool. But how do I keep my bonkers brain in check? Good question. The study of neuroscience is fascinating and complicated, just like your brain. These brain chemicals were designed by God to help us survive life on Earth, to be the you that He designed you to be. As you grow, your brain grows. If you've ever wondered why your attitude is constantly changing from one moment to the next, that's probably because it is. And on those tough days where you feel like your brain seems to be full of gaps, don't worry. Trust that God is in control, because after all, He knows your brain better than you do. I think I just got a dopamine rush from that answer. Thanks, Dr. Words, for teaching us all about neutronium emitters. Neurotransmitters. You said it. Words are dazzling. Use them with care. Yeah, bro, words are like the best. Question. Is it a sin to have negative thoughts? It's impossible to never have a negative thought. They will stop by, but they don't have to move in. You don't have to entertain them. Let unhealthy thoughts pass through and fix your mind on excellent things instead. So we're talking about our thought life and how we're going to think about the things we think about. When I think about my thought life, I picture it a little bit like a parade because in a parade, you'll have these beautiful floats and you can't take your eyes off of them. And then the next float right behind it is one that's so ugly. And when I say ugly, I mean ugly. But that's the one that you choose to follow down the rest of the parade. Doesn't that sound a little bit silly? In the same way that you wouldn't follow that ugly float for 10, 15, or maybe even 20 minutes, you don't wanna hold on to those negative thoughts that keep staying in your mind. You want to let negative thoughts pass right on by. Maybe for you, it's self-doubt. And you're thinking about the ways that you just don't feel like you measure up. Or maybe you just woke up really, really angry one day and you just can't seem to shake it. Here's the deal. You have an opportunity to let those negative thoughts go. 
and we can focus on the positive thoughts, the things that are pure, the things that are noble, the things that honor God, not this sarcasm. Don't focus on that. Focus on what honors God. When we think about the things we think about, we can then choose to let those negative thoughts pass right on by. Feels like we should do a challenge. <gasps> we can. We're in control. Hit the challenge button, Ricky. All right. Ooh. Ooh. If a thought isn't healthy, we're letting it float on. So let's play the Guess That Float Challenge. Instead of root beer, we've mixed vanilla ice cream with some new flavors. Oh, great. Can you guess the flavor of these ice cream floats? Possibly. OK, let's see. Oh. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Mm. Oh. Wow. Cheers. Cheers. OK, let's give this a taste. It's not bad. It's not supposed oh, to be bad, right? I know exactly what this is. It's coconut. Ooh. No, I think this is cake batter. Is it not? It's not coconut? Weird. It's good. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to say uh, boiled oatmeal. I feel like my taste buds are off because I feel like it tastes sweet. It just tastes like cake batter. The more I taste it, the worse it tastes. How weird. Uh, I could drink this all day. Is it? Sofa cushion? Oh my gosh, it's ranch! Something is off with my taste buds. Well, I'm going to give this a thumbs down. A I, thumbs uh, up. You you have to like it? <laughs> it was really good. Here, let's let, we'll let yours float on, but I'll, yes. I'll keep mine. Bring on the next float! It can't be bad if it's pink, right? It's like extra foamy. Yeah, like it's angry with us or something. Everything tastes like coconut. Weird. Is this not... Is it not coconut? Mm. Is it beet? Oh, it just has the worst aftertaste. Is this ketchup? Oh, Earthy. is it sand? What? You seriously had us eat dirt? Are you serious? Where did you get this dirt? I am speechless. <laughs> Thumbs down for me. Float on. Float, float, float down back into the float dirt. Float on. I don't want to keep eating it, but it wasn't horrible. So weird. Oh, great. These, ooh. these colorful, is this salmon colored? Let's take a sip. Oh, ooh, those bubbles don't taste as good as the last ones. Coconut. <laughs> it's not coconut. No. It's spicy. Sriracha. Hot sauce. Buffalo sauce? <gasps> Buffalo wing bacon. Oh my gosh, you bacon. did it. That's the thing I was tasting more of. Surprisingly, not that bad. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this a thumbs up. Um, I'm gonna give this one a thumbs down. Okay, but before you do, try that with the ranch, because buffalo wings and ranch go really well together. I don't like. Try it, Jamie. Okay. Do it. Yeah, nah, nah. Float on. I'll keep the ranch one though. Float on. Oh wait. No, I, oh, you're keeping no, it. That's right. Don't, don't you Sorry. float my float. <laughs> Oopsie. I never eat ranch, like, in my everyday life. Yeah. When I'm not here on the Loop Show, I don't eat ranch. But when I'm on the Loop Show, I drink ranch floats. Your brain is ridiculously powerful. Like, so powerful that it can see things that your actual eyes can't. What I mean is, look at these words. Finally, brothers and sisters. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. It sounds beautiful, right? Sounds like running through meadows or flying high on all of your emotions but friends. When our friend Paul wrote this, he was in prison. He woke up in a situation that was anything but positive. Yet, Paul focused his mind not on the circumstances, but on the things that no one could ever deny as good and full of life. Things that could never actually be illegal. Matter of fact, if you ask me, this list sounds a lot like who Jesus is. So, find your bullseye. Focus on the target. And with everything in your powerful mind, think, deliberate, chew on, compute, wrestle with, and aim your thoughts on this list because the things you think about drive what you say and do. And hey, if eight things is too much, just focus on the one. 
Focus on Jesus. So we've got these negative thoughts that we're supposed to let them pass by like floats in a parade. But what do we do with the positive ones? How do we think about positive things? How do we think about such things? Well, it's like this Rubik's Cube. Because what I know is that thinking about positive things, it doesn't come very easily. It takes practice. It's kind of hard to do it at first. But the more you do it, the easier it gets. It's like the idea that the more you lift weights, the stronger you're gonna get. The more that you rehearse a speech, the easier it is to remember that speech. Really, the goal is to create a habit of thinking about good, God-honoring things. But like every habit, it takes time for it to become a habit. So we keep practicing, we keep working towards the goal, which is making positive things, healthy things, admirable, true, lovely things, the things that stay on our mind. So what are you thinking about right now? Are you thinking about things that are true, things that are noble, pure, lovely? Because when you do, when you think about the things you think about, we're gonna let our negative thoughts pass by like floats in a parade, but those positive thoughts, the thoughts that are true, noble, admirable, lovely, pure, honoring, we're gonna focus on them until it becomes second nature. In the book of Philippians, chapter four, verse eight. Think about the things you think about. Finally, brothers and sisters, think about such things. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about the things you think about. Think about such things. Think about the things you think about. Whatever is true and noble. Whatever is right and pure, whatever is lovely and admirable, whatever is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about the things you think about. Think about such things. Think about the things you think about. Think about such things. Finally, brothers and sisters, think about such things. I like being in control. I like ranch floats. Who knew? I think we should do every episode from the control room. Sounds good to me. So this week, when it gets difficult to have a positive attitude, let your negative thoughts float on. Let it go and replace it with something lovely. <laughs> That's better. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride! Wow, today's episode of The Loop Show was so good. You know, our thoughts really do drive what we say and what we do. Let's talk to God right now. Hey God, thank you for making our beautiful, wonderful brains. You created them for a purpose. And we ask that you would help us to think about things that are true and wonderful and positive and that bring glory to you. We love you so much, God, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Today has been so much fun. If you haven't made a blanket fort yet, I challenge you to make one sometime this week. But don't forget to ask mom and dad for permission and to snap a photo or a video. And then with mom or dad's help to post it on Facebook or Instagram and tag us at Hope and Ocala Kids. I cannot wait to see these epic blanket forts. But today's fun is not over yet. On the screen are going to be some questions for you and your parents to talk through together. I hope you guys have fun talking more about what we think about and how we can use our thoughts to bring glory to God. I sure do love you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye!